In today's video, we are building an upgradable all Intel PC setup for both content creation and gaming, featuring Intel's brand new Arc B580, the Core Ultra 5 245K, and FlexiSpot's E7 Premium Standing Desk. At the end of the video, we'll take it for a spin in 8 games and also look at power and thermal performance of the new B580 and 245K and look at some benchmarks as well. On with the build.
Now, upon powering on the computer for the first time, we made sure to enable the Expo profile in the BIOS and downloaded all the drivers you could ever imagine from the Azeroth website for the Z890 Nova Wi-Fi. It's really disappointing having to install all these drivers one by one. And don't think you can just install Azeroth's App Shop because unfortunately, upon installing, it crashes the entire PC with a blue screen of death. And since their stupid app launches on startup, which again causes the same crashing, I had to go in safe mode and physically remove the files for App Shop. Now I'm uncertain who's at fault here, either Intel or Azeroth, but it's really goddamn annoying. Now for the Intel GPU drivers, we downloaded the launch drivers for the B580 and also the inbuilt iGPU on the 245K. And the driver installation was pretty straightforward. And this also installs the new combined Intel graphics software, which is a nice pleasant piece of software, which is a massive improvement over the shitty Intel Arc software. It has all your preferences, including game profiles, display settings and performance, and also includes metrics. However, for whatever reason, they removed the overclocking tab from this page, which I'm really not sure why since the pre-release driver from our review had this. But anyway, now I'm sure at this point you just want to see how this build performs, so here we go. Now we tested it at 2560 by 1440 instead of the 344 by 1440 resolution that the monitor we used for the setup had. But performance in ultra wide or 21 by 9 wasn't really far off, or about less than 10 frames difference. But even in ultra wide, it performed really well. At 1440p 16x9, we got satisfactory performance overall. In Asian mythology retold, with mostly high with no ray tracing or upscaling, we got about 74 FPS on average, with 1% lows of 43. We did observe pretty low CPU utilization and quite a few dips and drops in performance, hence the lackluster 1% low figure, but it's definitely playable. Now CS2 at the lowest settings, with no upscaling, saw 342 FPS on average, with 1% lows of 219. It's more than playable and more consistent than what I thought with this GPU, and frame time consistency was pretty good overall. Now in Cyberpunk at the ultra high ray tracing preset, with XESS set to auto, we saw averages of 58 and 1% lows of 47. We saw really consistent performance here, and probably the most consistent out of all the games. Even at these high settings, it's still able to maintain mostly 60 FPS at 1440p, which is pretty dang impressive. Now we also tested Cyberpunk with the same settings but with FSR 3 set to auto, and also frame generation enabled. And this time we saw averages of 89 and 1% lows of 73. Turning on frame gen with FSR 3 netted a 53% increase in frame rate than XCSS without frame gen. And we didn't see any weird issues and frame time consistency was on the whole surprisingly good. Now Far Cry 6 of the ultra preset with HD textures off with ray tracing enabled, we saw averages of 79 with 1% lows of 32. So much like what we saw in our main review of the B580, we saw frame time consistency issues, but performance held up in averages even with the highest settings and ray tracing. Now in Forza Horizon 5 of the Ultra preset, with XCSS set the balanced, we saw averages of 94 FPS with 1% lows of 33. In general, it was acceptable performance given the circumstances, but we did see a few issues with frame time consistency as shown in the gameplay, which resulted in low 1% lows. Now in Rainbow Six Siege at the lower settings, with no anti-aliasing, we saw averages of 228 and 1% lows of 101. I think it's slightly improved over the pre-release drivers in our review, but still the persistent optimization of frame time issues arise with our B580, but it's acceptable performance nonetheless. In Red Dead Redemption 2, at high to ultra settings with no upscaling, we saw averages of 82 and lows of 67. It's acceptable performance overall, and lows were pretty good, which highlights Intel's good optimization in this Vulcan title. In our last game in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the highest pre Set, with ray tracing ultra and XCSS set the balance, we saw averages of 88 with 1% lows of 60. So impressive results yet again with ray tracing, highlighting Arc's good ray tracing performance overall. Now, if you're going to replicate this build yourself, you might be better off with getting a lower end Intel Core 14 Gen chip, such as the i5 14600K, 14500, or 14400, which might give you better value overall. Now, let's take a look at power, thermals, and clocks. So, in our Prime 95 10 minute torture test, our CPU averaged 159 watts, remaining stable pretty much overall. Our P cores averaged 4.5 GHz, peaking at around 5, while our E cores averaged 4.1 GHz, while peaking at 
6. And temperatures on the 245K averaged 88 degrees while maxing out at just 93 degrees. Overall, I don't think with thermal throttle here, more likely running into the maximum rate of power of the 245K. Now, of course, you can unlock the power limits in the BIOS, but given our configuration with the Arctic Freezer 36 and the no additional fans, I probably wouldn't do that. Again, if you're going to replicate this build, maybe use a slightly better cooler and some additional case fans, especially at the back. Fans at the front would definitely help too. Now, Cyberpunk, in our CPU and GPU power, the CPU averaged 46 watts, but the GPU only really averaged 116. Our CPU on average clocked at around 4.8 GHz, reaching as low as 2.9, while E cores averaged 4.5 GHz, reaching as low as 3 GHz, although temperatures only really averaged 68 degrees. Our GPU maintained 2850 MHz rock solid 100% of the time, and much like the CPU, averaged only 68 degrees in the core temperature. Overall, it was pretty consistent, at least on the GPU side while gaming. The CPU was a bit sporadic, but we are massively GPU bound anyway, so it doesn't really matter. The perforations on this case allow us to get away with good temperatures while gaming. And it's also really quiet, especially when gaming, but also under heavy load. Now productivity performance exceeded expectations. It performed very well in both Photoshop and Premiere Pro. Photoshop scoring 97.55 in Pugibench and Premiere Pro Pugibench scoring 97.67, both in the standard overall score. And this translated to real world usage as well. I was able to edit the B580 review and I was seriously impressed with its performance. And I was able to handle any of the motion graphics with ease. Now the overall desk experience was pretty good. An ultra wide like the one I used in my setup, the OG 34 inch 160 hertz curved ultra wide really aids in the overall experience. I can have a massive timeline with plenty of space for project files, motion graphics, effects, and the preview. And the FlexiSpot desk was really good. I really liked the ability to go up and down from sitting to standing, which really aided in the productivity. And the profiles you can set for sitting and standing as well is really convenient. And the desk is also incredibly sturdy, being able to support a ton of weight and feels incredibly premium for such a desk. And the key Keytron C3 Pro, while nothing special, has this TKL design with smooth brown switches and that black just really matches the rest of the build. And the Model D2 Pro from Glorious that we use here is a stealthy mouse while at the same time being extremely ergonomic and functional and can go all the way up to 8000 hertz in wired mode and 4k hertz in wireless. And this means playing competitive shooters on this setup is definitely possible without the setup looking over the top. And the monitor being 160 hertz with a no frills design also aids in our aesthetics here. And the black stealth aesthetic really ties everything together for a sleek professional look. Anyways guys, that's all for today. Make sure to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Also make sure to check out this video on the screen right now.